The topic of generative AI has taken the attention of the whole healthcare community by force since the release of ChatGPT late 2022. On this channel at The Medical Futurist, we have been covering many aspects of this topic, from ChatGPT, the plugins for ChatGPT, AI image generators like Midjourney, and parts and segments of the generative AI story. So we thought it would be time to provide a big summary about what generative AI is, why it's different from the AI we had before, what large language models are, and where generative AI is heading for healthcare. Let's dive into this. My name is Otto Bertalan Meshko, and you're watching The Medical Futurist. We start at the beginning, what generative AI is and how it's different from the artificial intelligence we had before. Artificial intelligence has been discussed widely by the medical and healthcare communities for over a decade. There are more than 500 approved medical devices and technologies that use artificial intelligence only in the United States. So AI has been used in hospitals, by medical practices and for general public health healthcare purposes for many years. Even COVID-19 was first identified, the outbreak itself, by a Canadian AI startup called Blue Dot. But why generative AI is different from all that? Let me give you an example for that. Imagine the last time you went to a restaurant. You sat down, you got a menu, and the waiter took your order. Maybe you asked for a burger without fries. The waiter went away to the kitchen and they brought you the dish you asked for, even remembering the side rules you dropped into the picture. It was an AI working exactly as it was programmed, doing nothing more, nothing less. Now, imagine the same situation. You go into the restaurant, there is no menu, and the waiter brings you a dish that blows your mind away. Because that dish, that fine dining dish, was made for you, based on your preferences, your habits, your taste, even your mood during that day. In that sense, the waiter in the kitchen, the restaurant itself, was creative and intuitive in the process. Hence, this, is, this resembles generative AI compared to the traditional AI we have been having for more than a decade. Generative AI is a new subset of artificial intelligence and it includes algorithms that look for patterns and structures in the sample dataset and then try to create something similar. Same but different. It's creative from our human perspective because they create something new but all they do is that they look for patterns and structures in a huge amount of data to be able to create that new. That's why it's called generative. It creates new things. You've seen this in the form of ChatGPT and BART or in the form of Midjourney and Dolly, the AI image generators and the large language models. But let's see why this is a big deal. It's a paradigm shift because AI used to be only accessible to a bunch of scientists and developers. In dark rooms, they had access to AI that they were working on. But for the rest of us, it was just in the news. A new AI came out to be used in a hospital and so on. But now, since the release of ChatGPT, hundreds of millions of people finally got access to an AI-based service. We could finally start using it, interacting with AI. So ChatGPT has done a good job in making AI as popular as never before. Plus, now, every news channel, every media outlet is talking about artificial intelligence. From the negative doomsday perspective, I'm sure you've seen all those articles, but still, they are talking about the long-term benefits, risks, challenges that can come with artificial intelligence. Under the umbrella term generative AI, you find many things. For example, AI image generators like Dolly and Midjourney and large language models. Large language models, LLMs, represent the biggest category under generative AI. This is the most popular category because, again, hundreds of millions of people keep using it. ChatGPT, BARD, all these fall into this category. Large language models are really amazing at mimicking human discussions. They were trained on text, on, on human discussions, and they are working by a method called tokenization. They break down the question you ask in ChatGPT into tokens. A token can be a full word, half a word, a syllable. And what the LLMs really do is that they predict the sequence of the tokens in the output 
that will make you, the human being, satisfied with the results. So fundamentally, these models do not understand speech as we do or text as we do, but they are really efficient at predicting the sequence of tokens. Essentially, you ask a question, you include a prompt or so-called brief, and then you get an answer as the outcome of that AI-based process. Now, LLMs have plenty of challenges and com their use comes with plenty of risks. For example, ChatGPT cannot access information after its cut-off date, November 2021. Many LLMs keep hallucinating information because it makes a bad prediction while creating a sequence of tokens, essentially giving you the answer for your question. Even if you ask for what references you base your answer on, these LLMs might come up with hallucinated responses and references. And for the most important challenge here, the user, you need to be the one verifying the quality of information. Just like when Googling for health and medical stuff, you will be the one deciding and assessing the quality of that information, just like in the case of LLMs. But their promise that LLMs can bring to healthcare and medicine, these are unprecedented. Just a few examples. Let's think out loud here. What if a physician could use an LLM to write down everything that's being discussed during a patient-doctor meeting without turning to a computer and a keyboard? And that physician just has to reconfirm and validate what was written down. Just imagine how much free time it would give physicians so they can spend that precious time with patients finally. Or imagine that a patient receives a discharge note from the physician that's full of jargon and they don't understand what the kind of message they have to get out from that discharge note. You can ask LLMs to transform that text into something that can be understandable without any medical knowledge. You can ask these LLMs to analyze your lab results and I have specific questions about those lab results, please answer them. Or you can upload your sleep quality data from your smartwatch and ask questions about that. As a physician, I can ask an LLM to transform this text about the CT scan I just analyzed into a very specific uh, format used in radiology. We, in a recent paper, provided more than 40 of these very practical real-life examples, and you can imagine that the real number of these examples is simply infinite. We also published a paper recently about why there is a huge need for regulatory oversight about generative AI and why regulating these kinds of technologies would require different methods than regulating the traditional artificial intelligence that's already on the market. As you can see, there are clearly many risks and challenges and unknown potential circumstances and visions about using LLMs in healthcare. But I still believe that the potential benefits outweigh the risks if we do it in the right way. And just one more thing about the vision. LLMs bring something new to the table, the opportunity to finally interact with artificial intelligence. So right now, uh, LLMs like ChatGPT can deal with text. OpenAI just announced that soon it would also be able to analyze images. But the real essence, the real futuristic vision about these would entail the use of different type content formats, analyzing text, images, sound, video, and full documents. Just imagine that I could ask like ChatGPT in voice command a few questions and while answering the questions in text, it would also analyze my voice for vocal biomarkers. Or a patient can send a video recording of their physical rehabilitation movements to their physician or maybe to a ChatGPT-like service and that could analyze the video because it would understand the content and the context of sound, video, and images. You could upload a full study, a paper, in a PDF format, and you would have three very specific questions about that PDF. Can you see the futuristic implications of using this in medicine and healthcare? This is why multimodality is, is the holy grail of the whole generative AI revolution. Again, not only that these models will be able to analyze any kind of content type, text, image, video, sound, and full documents, but these will break language barriers. Just look at how a company uh, transformed my English language video into a Spanish one, even with lip syncing included in the process. Soy el Dr. Alberto Mesco, un médico futurista. Daré conferencia en evento de IA. La bestia en la habitación. Una I look like someone speaking Spanish while I just sweat every single day for 15 minutes on Duolingo, and I've been doing that for years. And finally, the third issue why multimodality is the holy grail here. Multimodal AI could be the new 
general interface in a hospital. Hear me out. I work in the hospital as a physician. I have to work with an electronic medical record system. Maybe that system is so smart, it uses an AI developed by company one, somewhere outside the hospital. But the Department of Radiology uses two different AI softwares developed by company two and company three. And maybe there is one more department that the, doing the clinical lab results and lab tests that use a, a different kind of AI and so on. As an individual physician, I cannot obtain the right skills and knowledge needed for each of these AI-based services, but I can very much learn to work with one generative AI interface like ChatGPT that can help me interact with those. So finally, multimodal AI could be the, the AI brain of a hospital while medical professionals can enjoy their job and learn to work with these interfaces just like this. Do you know what just like this means? It's called prompt engineering, an emerging essential skill, not just for medical professionals, but that's the, the field we published about recently. Prompt engineering means that you can efficiently design prompts or briefs through which you can interact with generative AI interfaces. We recently published an infographic and an article with the top 10 uh, most practical recommendations and suggestions about improving your skill of prompt engineering. That's where we are right now. This is the field of generative AI and large language models. I hope that I could provide a good minimal package of details and information from which you can start to discover even more by looking into this field. Well, it was not easy to summarize this topic in that much time, but if you still have any questions, as usual, please reach out, leave a comment and ask the question. And thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe below to get notified about every single new video we come up with. And also please go to medicalfuturist.thinkific.com where you will find our two courses, the Digital Health course and our newest one, Introduction to Artificial Intelligence in Medicine and Healthcare. See you there.